And she was like, oh, you want to flex about being wrecked? Well, he proposed to me first, and I'm going to show you that I could have had him if I wanted him, and I'm going to do this shit right in your face. Welcome back to my I Really Needed a Fucking Hobby channel. I am the Camille of being Camille as fuck, and today we're going to jump right into part two of my deep dive of the Chelsea Kwame Micah Thruple situation from season four of Love is Blind. In part one, I covered their time in the pods, so if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch that one because it's weird to watch things out of order. So go back and watch that one, then come back to watch this one. I think there's only going to be three parts. I don't know yet but don't be weird like do it in order so our couples have now arrived in mexico and at the reunion chelsea said this to every single conversation that kwame had after <clears throat> mexico with micah was pushing a narrative that wasn't ours and this is what inspired me to actually want to take a second look at this season in the first place. On my first watch, I had a really hard time understanding what these two even saw in each other. But I also do understand that the producers don't actually give a fuck about these people. They have a show to make. If my job, the thing that pays me and puts a roof over my head is to be a reality TV show producer and capture people's messy behavior and make it entertaining... That would actually be really fun. Yeah, this is so good. This is, I'm getting a raise for this shit. This, this was so good. Larry, Larry, high five. But let's say my boss comes to me and he says, hey, producer lady, what we have isn't messy enough. I need you to go work with editing, make it messier. Guess what the fuck I'm going to do? I'm going to make it messier, pass go, collect my check, and not think twice. The thing with editing fuckery is you have to give the people editing the show something to work with in the first place. And it seems like Kwame gave him a lot to work with because with all the editing tricks available in the entire world, the only thing that they could make seem dramatic between Brett and Tiffany was Brett's pants not fitting on wedding day. So we're gonna go back through Jaguar Moon's time in Mexico with a fine tooth comb. Also, just a really quick side note, I don't know these people, nor do I care about them personally. None of them have done anything bad to me. So I try to be as fair as I possibly can, in my opinion, of somebody that just watched about this much of their lives on a TV show. And in order to do that, I try my best to, um, like, put myself in their shoes and try to imagine what it is that they're going through and to to get ready to think about this crazy time in Mexico I think I think I'm gonna need a couple hits my edibles haven't kicked in yet so to get there I'm gonna need a little help I'll be right back okay so I'm in Mexico with a person that I've only known for 10 days but really only met them in real life yesterday. Okay. <coughs> and now, instead of being in the pods where I'm pretty sure the cameras are like mounted and it's easy to forget you're being recorded, now every single time I fucking have to go to the bathroom, I've got camera people following me around, expecting to capture me in some loving, affectionate relationship with this dude I just met yesterday. Why would any sane person do this? These people are fucking crazy. I love it. I love it. Mm, 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 mm. I love What's it. What's going to be going down in this pool, huh? <laughs> I guess I could find some comfort in the fact that this stranger has agreed to do this crazy shit with me and they're probably just as scared and confused about things as I am. I can't believe this is happening to me. I can't believe this is happening to him, to us. This is the best. I think where problems arise is when one person has different expectations out of the situation and they don't really talk about it. I feel like Chelsea was very realistic and grounded while she was in the pods, but now that she finally got a ring on it, I think she expects this Mexico trip to be like a literal dream come true Disney princess experience and basically just wants Kwame to play along in her fairy tale. Princess was so moved by his desperate plea that she stooped down, picked up the slippery creature, leaned forward, raised him to her lips, and kiss that little frog. Aww. 
Whereas Kwame is more grounded in reality. And the reality is the situation is fucking weird. But seeing how it's only been one day of this relationship in real life, it is kind of natural to want some reassurances that this person actually still likes you now that you have met in person. So here Chelsea is fishing to see if he still finds her attractive. We're like, I'm so excited. Now I'm so excited to go to Mexico. I was like, what, you weren't before? <laughs> you weren't before? You thought I was some ugly girl? No, she does it in like a cute little playful way, but you can tell she's serious as a fucking heart attack by the way, like sh her eyes are locked in on like waiting for his response here. I'll play it again. I was like, what, you weren't before? <laughs> you weren't before? You thought I was some ugly girl? It worked out exactly how I needed it to. That's why I love you. Oh. oh. <laughs> So Kwame says things worked out exactly the way he needed it to, which is acknowledging the mica of it all. And the fact that he feels, you know, good casually mentioning it, I can't talk. <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> so, <laughs> fuck, I got the giggles. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I need to go walk away. I'll be right back. <laughs> Fuck, I hate when this happens. I don't go awake. Where's my mouse? Fuck. Okay, there we go. Pause. <laughs> Kwame says things worked out exactly the way he needed it to, which is acknowledging the mica of it all. And the fact that he feels fine casually mentioning it here tells me that they're both at least at this point comfortable with what happened in the pods between him and Micah. They're not avoiding talking about it, which is a good thing. It shows that they're both able to move past it, but it pisses me off all over again that we didn't get to hear them talk through what happened. I would have paid a good amount of somebody else's money to hear how Kwame tried to explain how, yes, I was going to break up with Micah, but then, yes, I kind of proposed to her, but then, yeah, she kind of broke up with me. So then, yeah, things are kind of good for us now. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> they have this massive relationship defining conversation and we barely hear Kwame say shit in that entire scene. What did he say to make her so comfortable moving forward with him? Was he upfront and honest about his feelings for Micah and, and kind of put everything on the table or was he evasive? Did he bullshit his way and kind of downplay everything or Option number three was it that proposal day was just two days away and Chelsea made whatever Kwame said make sense in her head so that she got a ring on proposal day. Do you see how that conversation could lead this relationship in so many different directions and why I'm so fucking annoyed that we didn't get to hear the good parts? When Chelsea said this at the wedding, it kind of cracked me up. <laughs> you were the jaguar to my moon. I am the moon to your jaguar. It cracked me up because I was like, where the fuck did that come from? Is it because she's white and he's African? But revisiting their first night together, I guess this is probably the origin story of Jaguar Moon, at least the moon part. Look at the moon, babe. Oh, my God. I see it. Oh, yeah. The moon is out tonight. Seeing how crazy an emotional connection can, like, expedite a physical connection it's been mind blowing. Now I could see how that would be true. And again, it's it's undeniable that these two are very comfortable with each other. I think that I would be so awkward, but I'm a girl who thinks that if I ever got married again, which I don't want to, but if I did, that we would have to live in some kind of like duplex situation with a common area, because for some reason I attract men who snore loud enough to set off motion sensors. And I would hate to finally, finally find my soulmate one true love and murder him in his sleep because I was delirious and tried to chop his nose off. Not that I've ever thought about that before. Because I haven't. I have. <laughs> I've thought about it. <laughs> Tell me about what else, like, is, is like, that you want me to know about you. you I probably. have a baby blanket. It's Baba. Baba. I'm like, we might, we can retire Baba, maybe. She brings this up like she knows it's weird because... It's fucking weird. She seems to be assuming that being married means that she's going to have to get rid of it. I mean, you, you retire, Baba, whenever you want to. So instead of judging or freaking out, 
Um, Kwame understands that this is strange, but it's meaningful to her and um, she can keep it as long as she likes. And I'm pretty sure that she's probably been judged for her blanket before. Um, so Kwame accepting her in this moment and just being like rolling with it is probably like a really meaningful moment for Chelsea. I love you so much. <laughs> no. He accepted her weirdness like easily. And I can say I don't sleep with the baby blanket, but I definitely do a lot of weird shit. And I know the difference in what it feels like to be with somebody that um, not only accepts your weirdness, but they kind of roll with it versus somebody that's always going to like judge you and side eye you for it. And I'll just say this. If you are currently with somebody that judges you or side eyes you for the weird shit that you do, you're with the wrong person because there is somebody else better out there for you. And if you are my soulmate, one true love, hurry the fuck up. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you don't snore. So just as a reminder of how unnatural this situation really is, while Chelsea's having this really meaningful moment where I'm guessing saying the words I love you are finally connecting with her heart and the moment and all that shit, you hear camera people like crashing around in the background. For you and Hopefully you heard that. I tried to turn it up, but if you didn't, it's, <laughs> it sounds like somebody fell pretty fucking hard back there. <laughs> so anyway, they have their first night together. What just happened, babe? Uh, nothing. <laughs> A whole lot. Hey, you stop it. You keep the camera up oh, here, man. Oh, sorry. Kwame doesn't want any evidence because if his mom finds out he's not a virgin, she's going to get mad. But um, Chelsea seems to have enjoyed their first night together. This was making love was last night, setting the tone for the rest of our lives. And it's good. I think I touched on it before, but um, it seems like Chelsea's dominant love language is physical touch. So it's not really surprising that, you know, she was like in a hurry to, to do to do on the first night. I won't go through them all, but just in case you're not familiar with that specific love language, uh, here's a really quick explanation. People with physical touches, their love language feel love when they receive physical signs of affection. Physical intimacy and touch can be incredibly affirming and serves as a powerful emotional connector for people with this love language. The root goes back to our childhood. Some people only felt deep affection and love from their parents when they were held, kissed, or touched. So this next conversation is pretty interesting. I think we both expected it to be good, but do we expect it to be this good? I don't know. <laughs> I was going to ask you, is there anything like you're worried about me finding out or like about how our lives are going to gel together? He starts by saying how amazing everything was on their first night together and then asks him if he has any concerns. I'm nervous. About, I'm not even going to lie. I'm nervous about us heading back home. I'm nervous about figuring out how we fit. Now watch the disappointment on her face as he continues to say what he's nervous about. I'm nervous about the rest of this vacation. <laughs> like, hmm. you know, no matter how good it feels. There's a lot we haven't faced. I think she wanted him to say that everything was perfect in La La Land with her, but instead he's being very realistic and honest about his feelings. He's nervous about everything as he should be. <laughs> At least at this point, they've only known each other in real life for one day. Now it's Kwame's turn to ask a question. So let's see what's at the top of his mind on this fine morning. Are you nervous about us running into everybody? How do you think that's going to be? I think I'm excited. Mm -hmm. So like, how would you feel if I went over and kind of just had a conversation with Micah? I appreciate that he brought this up to see how she felt about him speaking to Micah. And she seems to be OK with it. Me too. I think that's important that we're confident. However, the very next topic that she brings up is very interesting to me. And we were talking a little bit about how like before we were about to get intimate, yeah. like we were both kind of nervous. <laughs> Why are you stalling? Let's go. So Micah gets brought up and the very next thing that she wants to do, she reminds him that they had sex last night. Like, yo, hey, remember, remember a couple hours ago, that thing that we did? Remember that time when we had sex? The other just like a little bit ago. Remember that? 
we all want all the elements of the love languages to some extent, but some are more dominant than others. And the only reason I mention this is because physical touch is like three or four out of five on this list for me. So it's actually kind of interesting for me to get to watch Chelsea and like how she moves and operates because her instincts are so different from what I would naturally do. The nerves. Yeah, what, what was going through your mind at that point? I mean, like, like I said, we, we've had this crazy chemistry the whole time. So Kwame was a little nervous before sexy time and she was the aggressive one. So she was going to make sure that shit went down on night one. Yeah, it's crazy, like actually putting your voice to your face, to your body. And again, in this conversation, Kwame's being very realistic and saying that it's like taking some time, getting used to being around each other in person. The feelings are there. The attractions are there. But girl, I just met you yesterday. <laughs> I'm going to need some time for everything to kind of to catch up, you know. Now, Chelsea probably would have preferred for him to whip out his guitar and do a Drake cover. <laughs> Baby, you my head, You all I ever wanted. We could do it real deep. Take it and you ever done it. You be up on head, Jane. And assure her that they're going to live happily ever after. Because you can see the absolute your disappointment on her face when he brings her back down to earth. In our relationship, we have been apart longer than we've been together. And I just keep like praying and hoping like, ah, oh, please don't make it too good to be true. Just make it this good and be true. Like that's all I want. You're all I've ever wanted, you know? Watch Kwame's reaction to what she just said. Damn, that was beautiful. <laughs> It can be really off-putting when feelings are mismatched, meaning somebody's more into you than you're into them. And it happens a lot at the beginning of a relationship. And I've definitely been on both sides of that equation. You like them enough and you could probably get there one day, but somehow there are many levels ahead of you when it comes to their feelings. And when they go to tell you how they feel, it just kind of makes you feel bad because you know that you're not there yet. As much as I appreciate honesty and being upfront, let's be real here this is a hard one to deal with ask yourself when was the last time you had to look somebody in the face somebody that you actually do like and this person is lovingly telling you how they feel about you and when it's your turn to speak do you go with option a look this person in the face who just lovingly poured their heart out to you and explain that yes i like you but maybe not as much as you like me, but maybe I could get there one day. So please be patient with me. Like, yeah, right. Or do you go with option B, just kind of keep your feelings to yourself and just repeat what the fuck they just said back to you or kind of repeat back what they said, but just kind of in a more vague way while you try to buy yourself sometimes for your feelings to catch up to theirs. Let's be real here. Most people are going to go with option B. Y'all ever wanted to? Now, because I do know myself and how I operate, I try to be upfront with the fact that I like to take things slow. If you were too pushy, you were going to push me away. So at least you know upfront what you're getting yourself into. That way, if somebody tries to come to me with feelings that I feel like is too soon for them to be having those feelings, and all I say is, oh, thank you. <laughs> at least you knew what to expect. And... <laughs> and yes, I'm a bit of an asshole, but I'm upfront about that too. Anyway, <laughs> I haven't gotten a chance to speak about Chelsea that much because edit wise, Kwame has been the main narrator of their story so far, but I can kind of relate to Chelsea in a lot of ways. Our first similarity is that I grew up in Washington too, Tacoma to be specific. And normally when people find that out, they're like, oh, that makes sense. So <laughs> And whatever. <laughs> yes, I am from Tacoma, Washington. Lakewood. 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 Anyway, back to Chelsea. Chelsea. What I see in her is a woman who actually has her shit together. Like there is this figuring it out phase in life that we all have to go through. And when you're chasing things, you're chasing, you know, school and career and yada, all this other shit. Right. And then you kind of get past all that and you enter, you hopefully enter the I got my shit figured out phase and I recognize Chelsea as somebody that has got her shit figured out. People like Micah and Irina are examples of girls who are still in the figuring it out phase but 
think they're in the I got it figured out phase, but they definitely have a lot more life to live before they get there, if ever. So Chelsea is a speech pathologist, which I had to look up. I had no idea what that was, but you have to have not one, but two degrees to qualify to do that job. And you also have to complete a fellowship to be licensed to practice. Um, I looked up the starting salary in Seattle and Chelsea is doing just fine financially. She mentions that her parents are divorced, but I believe it happened when she was younger because they seem to kind of all be healed from that now. Um, and there doesn't seem to be like anything really horrible or traumatic in her past because, you know, we know reality TV, they like to exploit that shit I think that we would have heard something about it she did mention a relationship but I think it probably just was a shitty relationship and she didn't make it seem like it was something you know absolutely terrible she just seems like a really um confident and self-assured woman who knows who she is and what she wants now where we differ number one she makes way more money than me but number two when I was her age I had already been married about to be divorced I had an 11 year old and zero desire to have any more children so um I, I try to like put myself in her shoes and imagine my life back then if that my path was different and I hadn't like started my family yet I do think that I might you know I might be starting to get we're a little worried about it because it's true as women we have to think about you know time for when we have kids we always have to think about planning for that and um so yeah I think I, I would be kind of getting a little nervous about it I'd kind of I'd be antsy but um at 31 Chelsea still has so much time to have kids like she doesn't have to just settle for some shit like she she has time I think that she has been imagining this picture perfect life since she was a child and it's been like a puzzle and she's been putting all the pieces together and it's almost there, but she has to find that one last missing piece, the husband. And once she finds that piece, she can put that puzzle to the side and start on the new family puzzle that she's probably been dreaming about since she was a child. I think that she is so ready to be married that it doesn't matter if Kwame doesn't fit perfectly. She's going to grab a fingernail file, shape his ass up a little bit and make him fit. She she comes off to me as the type that's like, I'm going to love him enough for the both of us. And if she is that type, Kwame is very lucky to have found her because I sure wouldn't. So before we get into the main event, the pool party, let me set up where I think that we're at. Because the one thing that this show does really well is making us, the viewer, forget the short amount of time that all this is actually happening in. And in doing that, it's easy to think that these relationships have a lot more depth than they actually do because let's be real love takes time and they only had 10 days to really see this for what it is i have to try to fill in the blanks from the pods around this whole mica thing okay so we're gonna go through it one more time day five kwame tells chelsea he's ending things with micah day six chelsea finds out that kwame basically proposed to micah day seven Micah breaks up with Kwame and he's all shook. All this goes down and on day eight, he has to try to explain everything to Chelsea. Think of what Chelsea had to be feeling during that conversation. Chelsea said that she was just focused on their relationship. So it's possible that she didn't talk about Micah much with Kwame, at least at first. But if she bit her tongue about it before, you cannot convince me that after all of that went down, Chelsea didn't take the opportunity to let her feelings about Micah be known. I don't trust that girl over there. You cannot tell me that she did not take that opportunity to tell him about the childish, immature shit that Micah and Irina had been doing back in the lounge that he probably was completely unaware of. Stay, you little villain. <laughs> I heard people that talk bad about one another is because they don't want cool with themselves, you know? Yeah. This is a game, dude. Like I tried to prove in the last video, if you just listen to Micah, she comes off it as a completely different person than we know her to be. So after the breakup, Kwame's in shock. And remember, he basically was like, okay, thanks for your time. <laughs> and ran out of the room. <laughs> They didn't really talk about it. So he, you know, has his meltdown and he probably spent all night trying to make sense of what just happened because just the night before she told him that she was falling in love with him. 
Like I really am like falling for you. And like, I haven't said that to anyone else. So how could you tell me that you're falling in love with me one day and then break up with me the next? Like one plus one is not not equal in two. The math is not math in. So he talks to Chelsea on day eight. And I imagine that she tries to explain, look, Micah is not who you think she is. It's much like Bliss did with Zach about Irina. I think finding this stuff out, it gave him the explanation that he was looking for. It made one plus one equal two. She wasn't being real with him. You played him. He fell for it. He feels dumb, which is why I think that he emphasizes being real so much when he refers to Chelsea throughout the entire season. I just want the real thing. Because if it was perfect, it wouldn't be real. The mm -hmm. best version of the real you. Yeah. We're supposed to walk out of here with our real connection. She's being very real. Looking at it from this perspective, I can absolutely see how Kwame would still be very confused about what happened. It's only been about four days since she broke up with him. And I think if I knew I was going to have to see this person that from what I've concluded was just playing me the whole time, even if I am like happily with somebody else, um, absolutely, yes. I would be very eager to see this person and have a conversation with them because, again, I would want shit to make sense. Like, I, I would, I'd want to have that conversation. Kwame. I think he's super handsome and, like, I think he's just as wonderful as I imagined. So they say hi, have a friendly hug, no big deal. But keep in mind that when they're doing those solo interviews, it is extremely clear that it's after everybody is very good and drunk. She's really beautiful, you know? I'm attracted to her. Like, I'm attracted to her. I'm sorry. Um, Kwame, you are aware that this is being recorded, right? That that That's a camera that's right there that you're talking straight to. There is a big difference in saying that somebody is attractive and saying that you're attracted to that person dick move and yes you are sorry for that one i do plan to make a video on micah and paul so i don't want to dig too deep into micah yet but to me she is the type of girl that is in a constant one-sided competition with any any girl in her vicinity that she feels threatened by and the goal of the competition the prize that micah is fighting so hard always to win it's attention and maintaining a sense of superiority i mentioned it in my last video but i think that there had to have been some kind of conversation confrontation between Micah and Chelsea after the proposal for Chelsea to feel the need to call a truce on day seven. I went up to Micah and I was going to have like a truce. So I think that these two women already go into the pool party feeling some type of way about each other. And I think after seeing Micah and Kwame in the same space, I think that Chelsea's confidence kind of wavers a little bit and she tries to flex and kind of mark her territory. You guys banging it? You guys banging it? Me and Paul have it. I am fucking wrecked. That's how I like it. That's how I want it. The rest of my life. I'm not shocked, but I'm very happy for you. Now, for the record, I do think that Chelsea was being extremely childish right there because she was definitely being intentional. But I think it was at this moment that something snapped inside of Micah and she was like, oh, you want to flex about being wrecked? Well, he proposed to me first and I'm going to show you that I could have had him if I wanted him. And I'm going to do this shit right in your face. Chelsea's comments were like a Mike Tyson size up punch. <laughs> <laughs> Micah's ego. So now she's going to spend the rest of the afternoon trying to make herself feel better. She needs attention and to maintain a sense of superiority. Or she's going to melt down like the Wicked Witch of the West and die. Sidebar for my stoners out there. Speaking of Mike Tyson, I got my hands on some of that Ric Flair drip though. Yeah. Oh, I got some of that Ric Flair. Woo! I have to say. But to no recommended. Back to Micah. Does she actually want Kwame? Absolutely not. But feeling dominance over Chelsea and repairing her broken ego is her singular mission for the rest of the day. Even if that wasn't her intention going into it, it is now. She just needs to get tipsy enough to be able to blame her actions on the alcohol. Thoughts, anyone? So soon after that interaction with Chelsea, Micah trots off to find Kwame and, uh, 
let the games begin. It's so weird putting your voice to your face. Yeah. It's so weird. <laughs> no, it's crazy. It's so nice to see you. So she approaches him for the second time. And this time she's being extremely touchy, like right away. And do not think that she is not acutely aware that Chelsea's standing right there and an earshot of everything that she's doing. Paul and I like love him so much, but like I had such a hard time like equating the two. But with you, I feel like it fits like a little glove. Paul's great, but you seem to fit like a glove. She immediately disarmed him with this compliment, essentially pointing out how he's better than Paul in some way. And I noticed that this kind of becomes Micah's MO when she's talking to Kwame, where she'll point out in some way that he's Kwame's better than Paul, like in some kind of underhanded low key way as a way of complimenting him. It was weird getting into it, but yeah. you know. How's everything going now though? Good? Good. I'd say it's, it's great. He backs away from her and he seems to be trying to bring up what happened in the pods, but she's only interested in him and Chelsea. I don't know, I just want you to be so happy and like, I hope that Chelsea's like that person that makes you happy. <laughs> you know she don't give a fuck about how they're doing. She's fishing, she threw her line out there, he bit and now she's reeling his dumb ass in. Cause like you really have the best heart, you know, I can feel it. With this, I just want you to be happy, little sweet girl person she was pretending to be in the pods. Hey, okay, it's over, okay, bye, see you later. <laughs> you know, and that's hard because we both yeah. have really strong feelings. He wasn't hurt, her ego was hurt, that he just basically wished her well and got up and walked away after she broke up with him. Now, another conversation that I am positive that happened that we didn't get to hear was Paul eventually telling Micah how Kwame was acting after the breakup. Because remember, Paul walked in after the breakup and had that really awkward conversation with Kwame. Larry, 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 get the camera guy. Get a camera on that door. Go, go, go. <laughs> oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> me and i'm sure that he had to have told micah about that crazy shit and he had to have told her that he was you know kwame was all crying and broken up about it and to a girl like micah i'm pretty sure that hearing that actually made her feel good she was probably only disappointed that she didn't get to hear him crying over her for her damn self it was me saying like i needed to like think and make sure I was making the right decision for both of us. Micah sure does like making decisions for other people, doesn't she? I thought I felt so sure about what we had going on. And I and did it, too. I want you to know that I did too. So almost every time that Kwame starts talking, she cuts him off in some way and redirects the conversation somewhere else. Yeah. We're supposed to walk out of here with our real connection. And that's what happened. When he says, we're supposed to walk out of here with our real connection, and that's what happened, he seems to be trying to wrap up the conversation, but she pulls out that nice girl act again and brings up Chelsea. Like Chelsea and stuff, like yeah. me and her weren't the closest, but as I start to see like her heart, I feel like she's yeah. very, very, very genuine. When have you had a chance to see her heart? This is the first time y'all have seen each other since you left the pods. She's being very real. And that makes me happy that you were able to find what your real match was supposed to be. Yeah. And that and that is it, right? Right? Question mark. Wink, wink. I don't know. I just want you to know, like, if you ever want to talk about anything, I know you're really happy now. I'm just, like, still here. If she simply said, I hope that we can be friends moving forward, like, that's one thing. But why does she phrase it like that? What the fuck would he need to talk to you about? No, I think you're so great. I think you're so great, too. <laughs> So. <laughs> and ladies, all my ladies out there, you all know that that grab you around the neck hug right there, that shit's very intentional. Now, we don't actually see Chelsea during that hug, but I guarantee that Micah knew exactly where she was. So that ends round one of Kwame and Micah at the pool party. And when you break it all down, it seems like Kwame was attempting to at least approach getting some answers, but rarely got to complete a sentence before she jumped in. And I think he eventually said, fuck it and let the conversation end. But as far as games go, we know that Micah was just getting started. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? You mean the guy that was going to propose to Micah last night? <laughs> and she goes, 
Anyways. So we learned that Irina was the one that um, said something about Kwame proposing in front of Chelsea. Maybe this is all that happened, but Chelsea doesn't seem like the type that's going to let that shit go. You hear your man just propose to the girl that he was supposed to be breaking up with and you don't say shit. Or maybe she didn't. Either way, we, we didn't hear it. Baby, what's up? Can you bring me a little, uh, when you're done with that conversation? Yeah. A little block and shit? Well, I got you. And they just ended. I think here Chelsea's intuition kind of kicks in. And I think that she sensed that he was having a conversation that she was not comfortable with. Even if she couldn't hear everything, I think she sensed it. And I think that's why she asked for that guac in that moment to interrupt it. Mommy! So then Irina's little childish ass asked Kwame to get them shots and he responds accordingly. Oh, would you? That's great. You should get off of the floaty and get it yourself. Um, <laughs> that wasn't enough. So Micah gets out of the pool and comes and rubs her what self up against Kwame. <laughs> Why do you deny us shots? Yeah, we haven't had shots yet. Oh, oh my God. Hey, Micah? Where, Micah, where are you going, dude? I shot for... Wait, I shot for a failed proposal. <laughs> 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 failed proposal? Whoa. Now, I didn't catch this at first, but this was totally planned because Irina is the one that actually starts saying the words to the cheers that Micah says. Hey, Micah? Where, Micah, where are you going, I dude? I shot for... Wait, come here. The whole purpose of this was to bring up the proposal in front of Chelsea, period. So Kwame gets pissed off and walks off. He, he takes a moment to collect himself, and then he wants to have a chat. Okay. Yo, can I talk to you for a sec? Yeah. All right. All right. I'll get one of those as well. Um, to a failed proposal? Like, dude, that's, come on, dude. That is yeah. not okay. I thought it'd be funny. I didn't appreciate that. So this... Starts out on topic. He's addressing the fact that he felt disrespected. Nothing wrong with that. I care about you. Like, I told you that from the minute I saw, I saw you. I was like, come on, me. So I would never say something negative towards you. Now, I have to say that Micah is excellent at disarming him. She compliments him. She grabs his hands. She puts her aw shucks face on. And she's got him hooked all over again. Don't make jokes like you did. Like that. I do apologize for that. Fucked up. Because. Because I like, I still care about you. I do. And there it is. This is what Micah was looking for. You know how I feel about you. That's, like, you know that's that. That's what pisses me off. Like, yeah. Micah, like, I think so highly of you. I really do. She is right in eyesight of Chelsea. She wanted to make sure that Chelsea saw this. Now, I don't even know if Kwame realizes that she's back there. Look at me. Yes. Let's go back to who we are as mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah. With other people involved. And she's grabbing him, caressing his face, and his dumb ass just sitting there letting it happen. We did feel so strongly about each other. <laughs> like, did I just meet my husband? Every single thing was genuine. Every single moment. So she's going on and on about how much she loved him and saw them together. For what reason, Micah? Let me ask you this. Would you would you be upset if Marshall and I had a 20-minute conversation? Look how Kwame and fucking, what's her name? Kwame's oh, in love okay. with you, bro. So Chelsea has every right to be pissed off here. If this was truly an appropriate conversation that lasted for 20 minutes, I don't think that she would have been so mad. But even if she couldn't hear it, she could see it, and she could sense this. That sh this shit ain't right. Well, then turn behind you and look. Yeah. So here Micah goes again saying all this unnecessary shit and Kwame again is oblivious to the games that are being played with his ass right now. That love that I felt for you was love for you like in your heart and love for you as your family and love for you as a person. Yes, it was absolutely genuine. There's a whole lot of factors playing into it, you know? Okay, that's enough. I have to go stop it. That's enough. I'm actually really glad that she did not go over there. One thing that I am noticing in this conversation is that Micah is doing a lot of validating and telling Kwame how much she was all in. And I think she used the word love like 52 fucking times in this conversation. But Kwame does not actually give her very much back. The reason why I so like with you in the pods is I love who you are as a person. Yeah. And whatever happens, I'll still be here. Yeah. I was all in with you. I was really all in with you the whole time. Yeah. 
I was so disgusted with all the touching. I think the first time that I watched this, I didn't notice this before, but he grabs her hand and like fixes her ring as if to say, I hear all the shit that you're saying and you touching all on me and shit. But remember, you were the one that made a decision and chose somebody else. That's really nice seeing you now. I know, it's nice seeing you too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I do love you. He says it was nice seeing her. She hugs him and production probably at that point grabs them to go do those interviews while everything is still fresh, which would explain why it seems like it took a long time before he actually got to talk to Chelsea after this conversation. Like I, the way it's edited, it shows that they keep talking. Um, but I, I think the conversation probably ended right then and there. So that was round two. And again, Micah did a majority of the talking and said a whole bunch of fucking nothing. But whatever voodoo that girl has is strong. I think what we see Kwame going through is realizing he's actually attracted to this girl and he desperately wants to believe that she is the person that he thought that she was. I think he is doubting any of the negative things that he may have been told about her. You know, when like your homegirl's man is an asshole and you're trying to tell him and they do the whole, but you don't know him like I do shit. Again, we have no idea if Chelsea ever said a word about Micah to Kwame. Maybe he hadn't heard anything bad about Micah, but trying to play about like, but trying to play it all out in my head. It just doesn't seem like the case that Chelsea's not going to voice her opinion about Micah, at least after they broke up. So now let's get to the aftermath. Look, I had to talk to her. I had to, I like, I had to talk to her. Like, I did not feel right about what was said. No, I'm not going to let that. I'm not going to let that ride. So his explanation is about the joke and she disrespected him and he wanted to address it. Let me calm down. When you have a fiance and when you have somebody that you love, that you care about. Yeah, there is a concept of that now. Now, Chelsea's right, but I don't like the way that she's made herself the authority on how relationships work. But like if that ever happens like you have to know that there's serious reason and intent behind what i'm doing no it should never happen he phrases that really fucked up and she caught it and right again after this time right here at right here there should not be a next time because you can't act right did you feel like you got closure tonight with her not fully but enough oh my god heavy hey now to be as fair as humanly possible to kwame Prior to seeing her, I would imagine that he probably put a lot of thought into what he wanted to say to her. He probably had, you know, some specific questions that he wanted answered, and he probably felt like nothing that he intended in either conversation actually got accomplished and would probably like to have that conversation again when they're not drunk. Now, if I'm being generous, I think that that's what he's getting at. Now, Kwame deserves closure. That's not the problem. It's how he conducted himself out there. That's the problem. Regardless of the fact that Micah was the one being all touchy, he's the one that entertained that shit. I don't get it. I don't get it. Hey, we, I'm good. I don't get it. I'm good. I'm good exactly where I'm at. Chelsea is so done with this man right now. <laughs> then let it go. Let it fucking go, Kwame. Walk away into the life that you're gonna have it's kind of crazy because i can see where they're both coming from it seems like whatever kwame said in the pods about the micah stuff was enough to make chelsea feel confident enough to like move past it and i really do think that she had moved past it and just wanted to move forward with their relationship but then today at the pool she sees that maybe this was a bigger deal than she was led to believe at first now this huge insecurity has been created in their relationship that would not have existed had Kwame handled that whole entire situation differently. And this is just night two of their relationship in real life. So it's the next day and they go for a cleansing ritual. To be honest with you, if I was in one of those situations, I would have preferred to maybe go out on the yacht. I'm just saying. All you focus on is what you are trying to picture. And what I was picturing in that moment was Chelsea and I connecting. Now, I don't know how effective the ritual was, but after some sobering up and getting some sleep, Kwame seems to have done some self-reflection and see how he fucked up. You know, I woke up this morning feeling not so great about last night. I could have done a lot better in that situation. I'm sorry about 
anything that went down and if it made you feel any way, you know, deprioritized in that situation. Like, that was really selfish of me. I'm feeling really peaceful about it. I, for, I forgave you. Now, listening to the whole thing back, I have to say that that was a pretty good apology as far as apologies go. It seems like they really worked things out the night before because Chelsea said that she already forgave him. So for our last night in Mexico, all the couples meet up again for some drinks. Like, I feel like I wasn't as angry as I should have been. Because as soon as she started sugarcoating her words to me, I calmed down. And she, she's been doing that since day one. You are a big representation of the company you keep. Right. She hangs out with Irina. And that, that's where I fucked up. And what is Micah concerned about? Call me tonight. I can tell that he feels a little bit more reserved from me. So I can tell that he's like kind of trying to make sure that like he keeps his fiance happy, which I actually respect. Oh, do you? But I do want to like talk to her and clear the air because she like did know, you know, the extent of Kwame and I's relationship previously. So Micah is one of those girls that you kind of always need to read between the lines. Let's talk about what she just said. Because she wanted to clear the air with Chelsea because she did know the extent of our relationship. Because she like did know you know, the extent of Kwame and I's relationship previously. Which I decode to mean she just wanted to take the chance to remind Chelsea that Kwame wanted her ass first. What the fuck does it have to do with anything? I know, what was going on? It was, like, I didn't understand what had happened between you guys, like, with your, com with your comment. So Micah goes to Chelsea and acts dumb. I don't think she wanted to clear the air at all. I think she saw that Kwame wasn't paying her no damn mind, and it pissed her off. And she was going to go talk to Chelsea and casually drop something that she knew was going to cause a problem for them. It would have been one of those, well, he told me, or he said to me, oh, you didn't know that? I don't know why he wouldn't tell you. Trying to be sneaky, but transparent as fuck bitch shit. That's what I think she was trying to do. Yeah, that's good. Oh my God, is it raining? Hello? But, of course, it starts raining before they can really talk about anything else. So the night comes to a close, and Kwame says something that we were all thinking at that time. My goodness, if Brett and Tiff don't make it, it will eat me alive. I know. It will kill me. <laughs> everybody. Everybody. Yes. I will die of an aneurysm. I think that I think that thousands of us would have all dropped dead if Tiffany or Brett had either said no. So the honeymoon is over and it's time for our couples to head back to Seattle and start real life. I have to say, looking at this for a second time, I do feel slightly different about their relationship than I did on the first watch. Their relationship is no Tiffany and Brett, but I do believe that real feelings have developed between these two. And at least at this point, they both seem to be really, truly down to giving this relationship a shot. Getting this video out took a little longer than I planned because I had a little last minute trip down to Vegas for a few days. But on a side note, I did like record a lot of randomness while I was down there and I got stranded on the way home. So I'm going to put all that together. If you kind of do like my little vlog style videos, I don't do them very often, but um, I am going to put that one together. So be on the lookout for that. Actually, it's probably going to be out before this one because I'm learning that I need to sit on a video for at least three or four days before I publish it just to make sure that the YouTube people bless it and don't take it away from me. Um, anyway, <laughs> I am rambling and it's because I'm hungry. So if you made it this far, there had to be something that you liked. And if you did hit that shit for me, I'm a small channel still growing and it's just a moment of your time, but it really helps me show the algorithm. Hey, look, people like this. So recommend it so that she can grow for the people that have just recently subscribed. I have to say thank you very much because, uh, I needed some motivation. <laughs> Desperately. Um, <laughs> I am so hungry. I can hear my stomach talking to itself. Um, everybody, please be safe out there. And if you get stranded at an airport, make friends. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Please like and subscribe.